الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا Welcome back my beloved brothers and sisters In today's episode we want to go through the next part of the series of when the Shaykh may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon said وَلَمْ يَقُلْ شَيْئًا قَبْلَهَا وَلَا تَلَفَّضَ بِالنِّيَّةِ الْبَتَّةِ the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not say anything before the Salah and it was never known that he uttered the intention ever The intention my brothers and my sisters مَحَلُّهَا الْقَلْبِ Its place is the heart right? and it is sufficient that you think about that which you're going to be praying and The Niyyah my brothers and my sisters as we are all aware right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Actions are judged by intentions, right? In whatever we do, we must make sure that we make the intention. Number one, firstly for its validity, it has to be valid, right? And in order for it to be valid, you must have the intention, right? And also my brothers and my sisters, when we look at it from the angle of the reward that we take away from this act of worship that we are carrying out, right? If you have the wrong intentions, when doing a particular act, right? Even though from the apparent you may be doing that which is required, however, you may turn up on Yom Al-Qiyamah with no reward simply because you did it with the wrong intentions. I'll give you guys an example, inshallah ta'ala, of the latter. Visiting the sick. It's something that my beloved brothers and sisters is praiseworthy, right? However, if an individual does that simply because everyone else is doing it, so I might as well just go do it as well, is he going to be rewarded for that? The answer is no. Or maybe because it's a cultural practice. However, if he visits the sick now with the intention of gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Will he be rewarded for that? Yes, he will be rewarded for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who engage in this act of worship, right? And likewise, when following the janazah, right? The funeral. If you're just doing that because it's a cultural practice and I have to be there because it's a relative of mine, otherwise I'll be looked at differently, then will you be rewarded for it? The answer is no. You will only be rewarded, my brothers and my sisters, if you do this for the sake of Allah Azza wa gaining closeness to Him. And I normally tend to also mention this example. In the month of Ramadan, one may attend the taraweeh because everyone else is doing so. Right? Or maybe because he or she has been forced by the relatives. They tell him, get up, it's the month of Ramadan, go. And if he was to say something negative or if he was to talk back, everyone in the household will look at him differently. And because of that, he attends, right? You just need to tweak your intention, my beloved brother and sister, right? In order for you to receive such immense reward, subhanAllah. So don't lose out, right? The intention can really magnify one's worship. He walks away with such great reward simply because the intention has been tweaked. Likewise, my beloved brothers and sisters, when feeding your wife or when feeding your children, if you just look at it as a chore or something that is a burden, my beloved brothers and sisters, look at how much reward you're missing out on. How many times a week do we go shopping in order to feed uh, our wives and our children, right? How many times? A number of times, right? And we're probably looking at it, oh, if I don't do this, then I'll be looked at differently, then I'm not coming with my obligations as a father, as a husband, right? Look what the Messenger Sallallahu said, إِنَّكَ لَن تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْتَغِي بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى مَا تَجْعَلُوا فِي فَمِّ مُرَأَتِكَ Right? There's not a time that you spend for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, and this is what should be on the line, except that you're rewarded. And then the Messenger Sallallahu said, even the food morsel that you place inside the mouth of your wife, Subhanallah. If you're doing that now for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, in order to gain closeness to Him, then you will be rewarded. And look again, my brothers and my sisters, 
amount of reward that we might be missing out on. Look how generous Allah Azza wa Jal is, as long as we do it the proper way. So now going back to what we was mentioning earlier, right? In order for your salah to be valid, my brothers and my sisters, you have to make the intention, right? Beforehand. You have to make the intention beforehand. And this is now considered a condition from the conditions of the salah. A condition is that which precedes the act of worship. It's a prerequisite. A more technical definition is that which the Usuliyin mention when they say which translates to be is that which is necessary for one to come with and you not coming with that which you did the act of worship for which is the condition it necessitates that you did not come with that which you did the condition for is that clear my brothers and my sisters it necessitates that you did not come with that which you did the condition for if you don't come with that condition. And the fact that you came with it, it doesn't necessitate that you came with that which you did the condition for. Right? So here the intention is the condition and you come with this condition, right? In order to come with the salah correctly. And the fact that you don't come with the condition, it means that you did not come with that which you did the condition for, which is the salah in this case. If you didn't understand my brothers and my sisters what I mentioned, don't worry about it. It's just a technical definition of the shart, the condition. Okay, so you must come with the intention, right? The intention also comes in extremely handy, my beloved brothers and sisters, right? When distinguishing between like acts of worship. For example, now you overslept, you missed Dhuhr and Asr. And by the way, my brothers and my sisters, it's a common question that people tend to ask. What happens if I oversleep? Am I sinful? Am I not? Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, an salatin aw nasiyaha, an idha Right? Whoever oversleeps or forgets to pray, then his expiation is to pray it when he remembers. Right? As long, of course, you try to uh, keep on top of your salat, right? You put the alarm on, and then for whatever reason, uh, you did not wake up, right? Genuinely, you forgot, right? Uh, in that case, inshallah ta'ala, the kafara for this individual, the expiation is that he prays it upon remembering, even if this is after three days, or after 10 days, or even after a year. He remembers, oh, that day when I went to the theme park, I forgot to pray, subhanAllah, we did not pray at all. Did we pray? He asked the people with him. And then they say, oh, subhanAllah, we didn't pray. And this is after a year when they were what? Remembering, right, that good day that they had. They pray there and then because of what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Okay, so you oversleep and you miss Dhuhr and Asr. Dhuhr and Asr are both what? Four units of prayer, right? How does an individual distinguish between both with the intention? that He's now going to be praying Dhuhr first. Okay, he makes the intention, right? The mere thought that passes through a person's heart is sufficient as an intention. And we don't need to complicate the issue of the intention, which sometimes can cause waswasa, subhanAllah. Which sometimes, my beloved brothers and sisters, can cause waswasa. That one is doubting, did I start the prayer? Did I not start the prayer? The issue is very, very simple. The mere passing of a thought in an individual's heart is sufficient. Is sufficient as Shaykh al Islam in Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned. Okay, so going back to what the Shaykh was saying. وَلَمْ يَقُلْ شَيْءٍ قَبْلَهَا He never would utter anything before the Salat, right? This never ever happened. This wasn't carried out by the Prophet Sallallahu nor was it carried out by the companions, nor the Tabi'een, nor the Atba'u Tabi'een, those who met the Tabi'een, my beloved brothers and sisters, they never done that. Even the four great Imams of Fiqh, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i, Al-Imam Malik, and also Al-Imam Ahmed, Rahmatullahi Alayhim, Ajma'een, all of them never uttered the intention. It is attributed to the Madhab of Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, that you should say the intention. Even the Imam didn't actually do this. As Al-Bayhaqi rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned, even the Imam Al-Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi, he never ever uttered it. He was speaking about uh, Masail issues pertaining to fasting, right? And they decided now to also apply this with the prayer. 
So this is not something, my beloved brothers and sisters, that should be carried out. In fact, it is an innovation that should be stayed away from. Okay, it is an innovation that should be stayed away from. What I think also is worth mentioning, my beloved brothers and sisters, is this individual who's suffering from waswasa uh, pertaining to his intention. How does this individual go about starting his prayer? He's doubting, have I started a salah? Have I not started a salah? Did I make the intention? Have I, and so on and so forth. It may be what, half an hour before he starts the salah? SubhanAllah. The scholars of fiqh, they have a legal maxim which is You know how someone who is not suffering from waswas or the whispers of the shaitan would have to double check that he's done things properly? That person who's suffering from waswas, he doesn't double check. He doesn't come with ihtiyat, which means to be sure that he's done that properly. We say to that individual, start your salah and that's it. And your salah inshaAllah is valid and correct. Is that clear, my brothers and my sisters? You must make sure that you just start your salah. Likewise, when it comes to the wudu, okay, this individual is suffering from waswasa. He's doubting, questioning himself, have I done it properly? Have I not? This is a sickness, my brothers and my sisters. Some enter into the toilet, right, maybe an hour before Fajr, and by the time he's finished, it's already sunrise because of him just repeating the wudu, right? Doing it repetitively, thinking that he's not done it properly. We say to that individual, make your wudu and exit from the bathroom. And the same applies in every other act of worship. You don't double check, right? Like someone who's not suffering from that wood. You exit from the bathroom and you go and pray with that wudu that you performed. Allahum sta'an wa alayhi tuklan wa la hawla wa la quwwati illa billah. May Allah Azza wa Jalla cure these individuals. Also, there's a line of poetry that Shaykh ibn Uthimi rahmatullahi alayhi mentions. He says, وَالشَّكُّ بَعْدَ الْفِعْلِ لَا يُؤَثِّرُ وَهَكَذَا إِذَا الشُّكُوكُ تَكْثِرُ Right? A question that tends to be posed, one begins the question and also doubt, right? Did I make the intention when starting the salah? When is he questioning and doubting this? After he's already finished with the salah. The doubts, my brothers and my sisters, that arise after the act of worship, my beloved brothers and sisters, does not affect the act of worship, right? It's non-existent. You should not take that into consideration, right? You prayed and then all of a sudden you start doubting, don't worry about it. And this is what the Shaykh means when he says, وَالشَّكُّ بَعْدِ الْفِعْلِ لَا يُؤَثِّرُ The shak, the doubt that that person has after doing the act of worship, right? It doesn't affect him. وَهَكَذَا إِذَا الشُّكُوكُ تَكْثُرُ And likewise, if someone now is suffering from a lot of shukuk, a lot of doubts, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Time is a very important thing and we take it for granted so much so that we like to kill time but in reality time kills us how much more time are you going to waste on your phone listening to random videos and podcasts why don't you utilise your time to seek knowledge we're always saying I don't have time to learn Look at how many hours we spend surfing the web and on social media. We have time, but we don't utilize it correctly. Spend your time worshipping Allah. Spend your time seeking knowledge. Allah said, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you finish one act of worship, jump on to the next. And remember, that the people who their souls are being taken and they're going to be dragged to the hellfire in the Qur'an. It indicates that the reason that they became destroyed was because of procrastination. Don't be like them. Make use of your time today. And start seeking knowledge now.